Hello, I'm Archie Luck. Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers. And today, I've got an email in from Jay from New York City. He's a New York fucker! That's right, a New York fucker. And he goes, hi Archie, I'm a big fan of the channel and you have inspired me in part to begin a lifelong journey of fulfilling a horological pursuit of happiness. Here's my history with watches. My first watch was a gift from my father at age 18, a Movado quartz piece. It's sentimental, but probably not worth anything. I knew nothing about watches at the time. It's a two-tone white face and clean looking, probably one of the nicest you can get from that brand. Then in 2000, I was making decent money, age 27, in the stock market and bought myself a steel tank Francais Cartier with date and added a black crop band. I left the black crop band on the last few years and wore it with a tux to weddings and formal engagements, but I wasn't excited by it. I still knew nothing about watches. At age 30, as a wedding gift, I got a Rolex Datejust with silver dial in steel and platinum bezel in 2005. It was probably a white gold bezel. Don't think it was platinum, fuckers. I lost it in 2011. Ooh, that hurts. And had it insured under my homeowner's policy. The watch was bought for about 4000 in 2005. And since it had appreciated in value, I was able to get a check for 8000 from my insurance. Hey, what a great idea. I added 5000 and bought a Rolex Daytona in steel. White dial, new. Yes, I paid over retail. I, I admit, not a great move, but I loved the piece. And I was turning 40 and wanted a cool piece. I now know per owned and or deep discount is the way to add value, as I've learnt from Archie. I hate retail. Retail is dead, dead, dead. So I paid 12900 for my Daytona and thought it was a fuck off piece. However, however, after watching your videos, I would consider it a fuck you, but not a complete fuck off piece. Would a uh, complete fuck off piece would be a Daytona in all gold. So after following you talks with friends who are collectors and more research over the last two years, I feel I am wise enough to begin building a proper collection. I have my steel Daytona with white face. I have the Cartier Tank Francais and my Movado. What I decided to do was sell my Cartier and use the funds towards my new watch, which will be a stepping stone to the future. My goal is to build a well-balanced collection of fuck-off pieces, an EDC, and one or two pieces I just love. Goal, six to ten pieces. So here's what I'm doing. I have watch guy and retail... Sorry, I, I went to... I don't know who the fuck... So some of your, your English there isn't the greatest, Jay. You, there was a Audemars Piguet model 15400, steel with a black face. S retail was 16900 You negotiated it for 11900 30% off. Learn from Archie's video on pricing margins. And I also got 2000 trade for my Cartier, which is not popular anymore. So I asked for a little bit, a little more off, but he wouldn't haggle beneath me. But... If you could do more, I would appreciate it and gave it to, to me for 11750 So with 2000 trade, I ended up paying 9750 for a new Audemars Piguet 15400. Movado is a gift from Dad, so I won't count that. My first watch in the collection is the Steel Daytona, and I love it. Here's my questions. Do you think the Royal Oak is a good move for my second piece in the collection? Do you think I got a good deal? Or great deal on the AP, paying 11750 Do you think I made the right move trading in Cartier towards the AP, considering I've never worn it and don't love it? What should my next two pieces be? I want a Jager La Culture Reverso Grand, preferably Grand Date Reverso. Do you agree or have a second choice? Would this be a good for my third piece? 
I also love the Brigade Type 20 Flyback Chrono and the Man on the Moon, but also worried about doing too many chronos. I wanted a quality collection with each piece adding something unique. Uh, I was worried about the same complication repeated. What do you think? Of course, my Holy Grail would be a Patek and also a Vacheron. Those would be the two watches I must so have the Holy Trinity, which PP and VC do you recommend for me based on my collection? And uh, that's, a, that's a, a very interesting email. He goes on to say, I'll never forget watching the video amongst friends. Sort of a Goodfellas ripoff. The narrator is talking about the character and he's describing he has a boathouse in the Hamptons. And then the guy looks at his friend who's sta staring at his watch and simply says, What? You want to have a good time? You've got to have a good watch. Well, Arch, I never forgot that and it's fucking right. Don't you agree? Keep making videos and screw those mean nasty haters. Signed, your fan, fellow watch lover, and pal, Jays. P.S. I will send pictures of my collection. I'll make a donation. Um, any fucker who doesn't donate and writes you should be ashamed of themselves. So tacky and really cheap. Okay, now let's have a look here. Okay, now let, let, let's answer Jays' questions. Firstly, do you think the Royal Oak is a good move for my second piece in the collection? I think that's a great move, Jay. I really love the 15400. I also love the previous model, the 15300. So either way is a great move. Do you think I got a good deal on the AP for 11750 Jay, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you get the greatest deal or not, okay? The most important thing is you are happy with the watches you've bought and you love them. That's the most important thing. Uh, I think it's a reasonable price. I think it's, it's, it's reasonably good. However, your third question. Do you think I made the right move in trading the Cartier towards the AP, considering I've never worn it and don't love it? Jay, that was a mistake. That's a mint box Cartier Tank Francais. See, you're looking at that Tank Francais as a $2,000 piece. You told me what you paid duty free. That was when the US dollar was in the, was fucking strong. The US dollar's gone in the toilet. Everything's doubled and trebled. I reckon that's a mistake. I personally, I really like the Cartier Tank Francais. And uh, I would have fucking kept it. For two grand, that's a gorgeous piece. It's a lovely piece. And it's a piece you bought when you were in the stock market. You, you're a high-flying investment person. Fuck, I would have kept it, Jay. I think that's a mistake. So, in all honesty, I think you told sold it too cheap. How do you mean it's not loved anymore? The Cartier Tank Francais is not loved? What the fuck are you talking about, Jay? Fuck! So, personally, I think that was a big mistake. But, uh, okay, let, let, let's move on. It, it, <clears throat> look, it's, it's okay as long as you're happy with what you achieve at the end of the day. Your next pieces, I, I actually agree with you there. I'd be saying, well, Jager La Coltra. Now, you need to get a Jager La Coltra grand, the bigger, the bigger ones, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to be a grand date. There's some wonderful Jager La Coltra pieces out there. So, I, I wouldn't just limit it to a, to a grand date. But, you know, that, that, that's a cool piece. But, uh, Verso, definitely tick that box. Breguet Type 20, that's a cool, that, I really love them. I think they're, they're really good value, and it's a Breguet for fuck's sake. It's a Breguet. It's a Breguet. So, I, my own opinion is, I tell you what I feel, Jay. I reckon the Rolex Daytona is fucking cool. Don't sell that. That is a good piece. The Daytona is a fuck off. That is, that is a good piece, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong. The Breguet's cooler... But investment-wise, it sinks like a fucking stone. You would never buy the Breguet new. It's the same price as the Daytona, and it sinks like a stone. So, hey, the Daytona is cool. <clears throat> you need a Rolex in the collection. I'm getting a date just hopefully next year, okay? Because I think I need an everyday sort of a watch you can wear that's rugged, tough, and can go everywhere. So I would have to say that the... Um, 
The Daytona is super cool. Keep that, never sell it. I love the white dial Daytona as well. Too many people have the fucking black dial. They, they all crave the black dial. Fuck that bullshit. The white dial is cool. Number two, the, um, the AP15400. That is a to die for piece. I love it. I would rate that almost as much as I love my Calatrava. That's how fucking cool that piece is there. It is, it is so cool. It's, I reckon, the AP15400 is one of the coolest pieces. It's a complete fuck off piece. And uh, there you go. That's a reference point. That's my, uh, my, my Calatrava. But um, fuckers, that is a cool piece. The Movado, look, sentimental value, that's okay. I, I, I would say myself there, you got two good pieces. <clears throat> the third piece, don't be any any rush, Jay. You don't want to add dog shit. Too many people, they add stocking filler. You know, they add compromised pieces instead of getting the really nice ones. They get compromised pieces to build a collection all of a sudden. And you've got to do it slowly and get quality pieces. They Daytona is fantastic, beautiful. The AP is amazing, beautiful. Uh, you're going to add a large size reverso. That is cool. Add a Breguet as your chronograph, Breguet Type 20. That's a good value. Oh, you got the Daytona. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. <clears throat> so you got the, the Daytona. Okay, that's cool. You got the, the AP, okay. You get a Reverso, large size, grand version. Uh, you can add a flyback. If you wanted a flyback, <coughs> the Breguet Type 20, you, you possibly could. It's, it's, a, it's on a leather strap. That, that's how you do it. You have the, the, the Rolex is on, a, on the bracelet, get the the Breguet Type 20, like mine, which is on the, the leather strap. So that that's okay. Uh, I think you got a good idea there. I, I'd be looking at, I think as far as a, uh, a, uh, a Patek goes, the Vacheron, <clears throat> get the Vacheron later, get a Patek. You need a Patek, Jay. Get a 5107, 5196, 5296. 5227, 5127, you need a Calatrava. That's what you fucking need, okay? I reckon the next piece, either make it a Jaeger La Coltra or a Patek Calatrava. That is what you need. I'm Archie Luxury, and uh, thank you so much, Jay, for the kind donations you've made there. He's a handsome fucker. He's a really, really handsome fucker. i got to tell you, he's a good-looking bloke. Jesus Christ, if I lost a bit of weight... I might be handsome too, fuckers. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think of Jay's collection. See you later, fuckers. We specialize here in pre-owned Rolex watches. Rolex watch is a very special timepiece and we always do the servicing exactly as factory specifications. We buy a pre-owned piece and we put it into brand new condition. We have Rolex certified technicians working on that. We completely disassemble the piece. We adjust and polish and change every single part of the watch. You have to have certified watchmakers that know what they're doing. If you have an expensive car, you're just not going to bring it to any mechanic that doesn't know what they're doing. You spent $5,000. It's like if you put money in the safe deposit box. And one or two years from now, you will keep having your $5,000. We have to spend a lot of money to get all this equipment together, but makes me feel I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's not a question of money, it's my passion. Jewelers on time, simply the best.